Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to discuss an article from the New York Times, they did some really good work here, saying a dad took photos of his naked toddler for the doctor. Google flagged him as a criminal. Google has an automated tool to detect abusive images of children, but the system can get it wrong and the consequences are serious. Now on this channel, I have discussed privacy concerns, whether we're talking about Apple, scanning the pictures on your device, or we're talking about Google, saving the voice recordings from my phone for over 10 years and transcribing them and saving them to my account where they're searchable without me consenting to it. There are a lot of concerns regarding privacy when it comes to some of the things that these tech giants do. And it's one of those things where people will say, well, why do you care if you're not doing anything wrong? Well, here I'm going to read some of the excerpts from Slashdot, and you tell me. The nurse said to send photos so the doctor could review them in advance, describing how an ordeal began in 5 February of 2021 for a software engineer named Mark who had a sick son. Mark's wife grabbed her husband's phone and texted a few high-quality close-ups of their son's groin area to her iPhone so she could upload them to the healthcare provider's messaging system. In one, Mark's hand was visible helping to better display the swelling. Mark and his wife gave no thought to the tech giants that made this quick capture and exchange of digital data possible, or what those giants might think of the images. With help from the photos, the doctor diagnosed the issue and prescribed antibiotics, which quickly cleared it up. So we're all good, right? Wrong because he used Google to <laughs> deal with this entire exchange. Two days after taking the photos of his son, Mark's phone made a blooping notification noise. His account had been disabled because of harmful content that was a severe violation of Google's policies and might be illegal. A learn more link led to a list of possible reasons, including child sexual abuse and exploitation. This video is not getting monetized. He filled out a form requesting review of Google's decision explaining his son's infection. At the same time, he discovered the domino effect of Google's rejection. Not only did he lose emails, contact information for friends and former colleagues, and documentation of his son's first years of his life, but his Google Fi account shut down, meaning he had to get a new phone number with another carrier. Without access to his old phone number and email address, he couldn't get the security codes he needed to sign into other internet accounts, locking him out of much of his digital life. And this is why, again, if you are you know, dealing with any of these free email services and that is how you deal with Con Edison, that's how you deal with your phone, your internet, your, your gas bill, it's probably best that you use some sort of other email hosting solution for that so that you are not at the mercy of Google when it comes to these things. I actually do use my own host for all of this because I don't want to be at Google's mercy if it comes to the, you know, them deleting my account because I said something wrong on YouTube and now I'm not able to log in to pay my electric bill. A few days after Mark filed the appeal, Google responded that it would not reinstate the account with no further explanation. And this is one of the problems that you have with these systems. This is something that people have been talking about with YouTube for years. You know, Eli, the computer guy, had a case where he got hit with a strike for vaccine misinformation. He said that I got vaccinated because I wanted to protect my wife, who has had cancer three times. So I thought that if it lowered the chances of me spreading it to her... That's, you know, makes sense for me. And that was considered vaccine misinformation, and it got deleted from YouTube. And when he actually tried to appeal the strike, he, he still lost because this entire system sucks balls. It's also the experience that I had 15 years ago when I was trying to use Google Checkout. I remember trying to call the system that they had on file with the state for anybody who accepts credit card payments, because if you do that in New York State, you actually have to have a phone number on file. Not only does Google not respond to any of my emails, but when I called the number they had on file with the state regulatory authority, it literally beeped and then clicked and then hung up on me because, well, they can get away with whatever they want. And this is a serious problem. It's not just that they make mistakes, it's that they are completely unaccountable to actually answer for them. Mark didn't know it, but Google's review team had also flagged a video he made and the San Francisco Police Department had already started to investigate him. In December of 2021, Mark received a manila envelope in the mail from the San Francisco Police Department. It contained a letter informing him that he had been investigated, as well as copies of the search warrant served on Google and his internet service provider. An investigator, whose contact information was provided, had asked for everything in Mark's Google account, his internet searches, location history, his messages, and any document, photo, and video he'd store with the company. Now, do keep in mind how bad this is. Because again, keep in mind, in this video, what I'm showing you over here, I used to use Google's voice to text feature to type into my phone. I used that feature when I got my first Android phone and HTC Incredible in 2010. And they saved this shit to the point where in 2019, I could see all of this. In 2019, I could log into my account and actually see transcriptions of what it is I said into my phone. And I could download the audio, I could search for it, and I never consented to that shit. Now I know what somebody's gonna say, Lewis, you probably didn't accept, you didn't mean the Hilton. Fuck you people who say you didn't read the EULA. The EULA is 900 pages long, it's written in legalese, and nobody fucking reads that shit because it's impossible. Shit like this should be opt-in, not opt-out. This is something that I call EULA roofing. Yes, 
I should have checked my drink and brought it to a chemist or something before I put it in my mouth when it was off to myself. No, we live in a society where we should have some sort of basic fucking human decency towards each other, and that includes not Eula roofing you. This is what I call Eula roofing. I have a, somebody who I'm doing a podcast with in the next few days who said that he logged into his Apple account and they were able to see for something that he listened to some podcast I listened to four years ago. I paused it at this time and I started playing it again after skipping ahead at this time. Like, why do you need to save this information for five years? I'm sick and fucking tired of hearing people say, you know, these people are just all privacy nuts or they're just way too concerned about privacy. These wing nuts that care so much about not being watched all the time. Yes, if I'm not doing anything wrong, and I'm taking part in an activity that is none of your fucking business, I have nothing to gain from you watching me all the time. And I might not want you watching me all the time. Because when I'm doing something innocent, like taking a picture to send to my child's doctor, as requested by my child's doctor because my child is sick, you may misinterpret that because you're an idiot. Whether you are a silicon-based idiot, or whether you are a carbon-based life form-based idiot. They come in many forms nowadays with artificial intelligence. You may wind up running to the police and massively fucking up my life. Because here's the thing in America, regardless of whether you're innocent or guilty, the moment they run to the police with that shit, they have massively fucked up your life. And if there's no benefit to me to you seeing what I am doing, then frankly, you should have no fucking business looking at what I'm doing. And this article is an excellent example of exactly why privacy is so important. And it's why if there's no benefit to someone seeing what it is you are doing in the comfort and privacy of your own home, that it should stay that way. When they think you did something wrong. Even if you actually did not do anything wrong, they will be able to hand over information that you don't even remember. Conversations that you probably don't even remember having that you didn't even know that they saved. So it's very important that the people who are watching this video log into their Google account and see just how much of this shit they got you roofied with in the case that something like this happens. Because I'm sure that you probably have some private stuff that you don't want to share with people that you don't know. Anyway, it's as Mark called the investigator, Nicholas Hillard, who said the case was closed. Mr. Hillard had tried to get in touch with Mark, but his phone number and email address hadn't worked. Mark appealed his case to Google again, providing the police report, but to no avail. A Google spokeswoman said the company stands by its decisions. The day after Mark's trouble started, the same scenario is playing out in Texas. The Times notes, quoting a technologist at the EFF who speculates other people experiencing the same thing may not want to publicize it. There could be tens, hundreds, or thousands more of these, which is true. Again, we live in a world where the moment that you mention any sort of child exploitation, it doesn't matter if you were right, if you were wrong. People don't want to go anywhere near that shit. They're just like, oh. And they just start to back away, regardless of the details of the actual case. And they're right. Now, Google told the newspaper that child sexual abuse material is abhorrent, and we're committed to preventing the spread of it on our platform. I'm confident that that's why it is opt-out, not opt-in, to collecting audio recordings of everything I fucking said into my phone for nine fucking years. Anyway, what I hope to get out of this video is encouraging you guys to consider utilizing other platforms and other services. How stuck on Google are you when it comes to everything? Like one of the thing, videos I did recently was a quick review of something called Calyx OS. It's a de-Google to Android phone with a privacy focus. It uses stuff like Micro-G instead of Google Play services. They try to recommend things that are not Play, that are not Google's cloud, not you know Google's uh, calling system or chat systems and everything else, so that you can have all the benefits of Android and use the apps that you used to use before while minimizing the damage done to your privacy by having Google watch everything that you do. And I'm going to include a link down below to show you just how many times many of these devices wind up phoning home in contrast to devices that do not use Google's operating system with all of their random crap and spyware put on it. And it's one of the reasons that I'm particularly proud and happy to be working at this new company that I'm working for over here. I talk about that here. We are looking to invest in and give grants to technology companies that give control of your hardware and your software back to the end user. We have a legendary grants program, and the idea behind this legendary grants program is to give money to people who have been doing amazing work in this space already that have contributed to giving people back control of their devices. We've given a legendary grant to the developers over at Graphene OS, which do amazing work. We are giving a legend working on giving a legendary grant to Ian Clark, the creator and founder of Freenet, who's also working on Locutus. We've given a legendary grant to the Calyx Institute, which is responsible for the operating system that is on that phone that I'm going over here, and we're looking to give many more. I will leave an email down below for anybody who's interested or curious. Again, the worst thing that can happen is the email gets deleted or you get a no. Best case scenario, if you're Graphene, Calyx, or Ian Clark, 
you get a decent amount of money that you could use to continue developing what you've been developing. But what we want to do is we want to see more operating systems, more hardware, more software, more online platforms and services that actually respect your privacy, that don't abuse you in this manner. I understand. We do not like CSAM. It is detectable to have to deal with CSAM. At the same time, it is also detestable that a company that is worth over $1 trillion cannot respond to something like this, even after the police have gotten involved, investigated it in full, and said that there's nothing to see here. Have a nice day. To this day, I still have not gotten a response to the 2008 closing of my Google checkout account, and Eli, the computer guy, has still not gotten a response to any of his strikes. He literally said, I got a vaccine because my wife has had three cancers, and I thought that if it lowered my likelihood of having a higher viral load and giving her any of these other things, then it made sense to me to get it to protect my wife. And he, he said this, he had his video deleted, because apparently that's fucking COVID misinformation in the, in the 2022. The problem that you have here are that it's not that these platforms are trying to do the right thing. It's that when they try to do the right thing, they fail so fucking hard and there's no way to deal with them. There's no way to contact anybody. I think that Google, in my opinion, they really perfected the business model of being able to print money without being accountable to real human beings. There are many verticals that Google enters where typically you'd expect to be able to speak to somebody on the phone and speak to somebody that can actually make a decision to get you an answer, and they've just managed to completely erase all of that. So what you're dealing with is essentially this black box. And when that black box is accountable and responsible for you being able to have two-factor authentication, for you to be able to have a, a phone number, for you to be able to have an email address that you use, for you to be able to have your contacts and everything else, and they can just turn it off like that, that's pretty fucking bad. So what I would suggest that you all do is do an audit of your life and try to figure out just how much control Google has over it and try to start slowly clawing it back. Again, I'm doing that in this video. In this video, you can even see on the screen the YouTube app is there. I replaced it with something else because I don't want to have an app from Google on my phone. I'm slow. I'm taking small steps. Right now, I use MicroG instead of Google Play services. It's better than nothing. But I'd like to be at a point at some point where I'm not using that at all. I'm taking these, I'm using Odyssey and Library, and I am responding to comments on there more than I am on YouTube. I'm no longer using Gmail for personal email the way that I was before, using my own self hosted shit. It's a process. It really is a process to just like detach from the matrix of Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and everybody else. It's very, very, very difficult to do. We are working on trying to create a world where this shit is not the only option. And I'm going to need your help to try to get that done. We've made a couple of interesting grants, and we're looking to make more into the future for people who think that they can be part of the solution to this problem. And I'm honestly happy, humbled, and honored to be able to be a part of that. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And oh, one last thing before I go. Check it out on the links in the description below. There's two links that I'm going to include that go over just how much your device, if you're using stock Google Android, is phoning home and connecting and reporting things about your usage and your location and everything else where you probably did not consent to. See you in the next one. Bye now.